solving problems with more than one right triangle, which basically is probably going to be two right triangles. So for the following figure, determine the length of AB to the nearest tenth. We need this length here. Now, we don't have enough information. If we use the large triangle ABC, we'll have this angle here and this angle here. And we can figure out angle C. Since these two add to 70, this angle must be 110 degrees. Uh, but that's not going to help us because we won't have a right angle triangle. So basically what we need to do is, let's call this point D. And then we can use the 30 degrees and the 50 centimeters to calculate AD. And we can use the 40 degrees and the 50 centimeters to calculate BD. And to find AB, we'll add together this length and this length. So we're going to have to solve more than one right triangle. Okay, so let's first off find A to D. So we have 30 degrees. This is the side opposite. This is the side adjacent, which is what I want to find. So in solving any trig problem, half the battle, which ratio? It's going to be the tangent. So the formula is that tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Let's fill in what we know. The tan of 30 degrees is equal to opposite 50 over AD. So AD is 50 divided by tan 30 <coughs> degrees, right? And we did that in the other uh, examples about these interchanging, so I'm not going to flog a dead horse here. So AD is equal to, now we want to round to the nearest tenths. So we're going to carry a few more decimal places here. We'll go 28.8675 centimeters. If we carry a few more than we need, then when we do our final rounding, we're going to be okay. That's AD. Now we're going to find BD. Okay, 40 degrees, opposite, adjacent. So we're going to use the tangent ratio again. I won't write the formula, we already wrote it, but we'll write the tan of 40 degrees is equal to 50 over BD. BD is 50 divided by the tan of 40 degrees. D is equal to 41.955. Centimeters. Again, knowing that we're going to round our final answer to the nearest tenth, we're going to carry a few more decimal places than that so that when we do our rounding to the tenth, we will in fact get the accurate or proper value. So AB is equal to AD plus BD, which is 28.8675. Plus 41.9550. At this point, you'll note this diagram really isn't to scale, which is fine because, you know, most of the time or a lot of the times, our diagrams are simply placeholders for information. You know, the more accurately they're drawn, the better, but it uh, just doesn't always happen that way. But they hold the information and we can do this. So this is uh, 70.8225, and let's put on centimeters, but our final answer then is that AB is equal to 70.8 centimeters, okay, and that's the length of AB rounded to the nearest tenth. And I think the original sheet we gave you may not have had this on it, so there may be a few differences. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to give you a new sheet of this, or you can print it off. I've loaded this sheet up onto uh, Schoology, the more up-to-date sheet, because we changed some of the examples as well. It now goes to actually six examples. Determine the area of triangle ABC, again, to the nearest, this time, to the nearest whole number. Okay, area, 
of a triangle, you remember area of a triangle, area is one half base times height. One half, we now have the base. Now in this case, we're gonna use the unrounded value, right? Eight, two, two, five, times the height, which is 50. And we'll work that out and then we'll round it and we get 1771 centimeters squared, right? Or square centimeters, because we're doing area and area is measured in square units. Okay, now I'm gonna pause and go let the dog out. Solve for angle SPR to one decimal place. Okay, so where is SPR? When we name an angle using three letters, we say we start at S, go to P, and then down to R. So this is the angle that we're talking about right in here. That's angle SPR. We can't actually refer to angle P because are you talking about this angle or this angle when you're talking about angle P? So we have to be very specific and use three letters S, P, R. Now, here's the problem. We have the 90 degree angle and we have this side. We don't have either of these two angles. And you'll remember that we need two out of three pieces of information. One angle, not the right angle, one angle and a side or two sides. So there is not enough information in triangle SPR to solve. So now we move to the next triangle, PR, nah, let's just for the heck of it, we'll call this Q. So if we're talking about triangle PQR, we do have an angle and a side. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for PR here. When we find PR, we will now have two sides and we can use those two sides to calculate this angle. So this is the side I wanna find. I'm gonna call it little Q. So I've got 28 degrees. This is opposite. This is hypotenuse. I'm going to use the sine ratio. So I'm going to say the sine of angle Q. And remember, I just called it Q. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's our formula. The sine of 28 degrees is equal to little Q. We could also call it PR. Right? So we could also call that PR. Q over the hypotenuse, which is 18. Want to get rid of the 18, we're going to multiply both sides. So Q is equal to 18 times the sine of 28 degrees, which is equal to, uh, well, let's go to the calculator, which keeps turning itself off. Uh, clear this to get out of the way. So 18 sine. 28. You don't actually need to close that parenthesis, but 8.45048813. Now, keep in mind when we're solving this, Q is an intermediate solution. So we're going to want to keep it, whatever it was, uh, 8.45. So I'm going to write down 8.45, bad short term memory, 04. Zero, four, and I'm just gonna put down some dots just to say, you know what, there's more there and I'm gonna show you how to use your calculator so you don't have to write this out again. So the next thing we do is we move to this triangle here and we say that uh, I have, so in relation to this angle here, this is opposite, angle P, Actually, actually SPR, right? This is adjacent, and this is the hypotenuse. So I know the hypotenuse, right? I know the adjacent. So we're going to use the cosine ratio. So the cosine of angle P is adjacent over hypotenuse, well really the cosine of any angle, that's the formula. Uh, cos of P, that's what we want to find, adjacent we know is 6, and let's call this Q, because it is, and we'll put that number in, right? So we know Q. So P is equal to the inverse cosine 
of 6 over Q. All right, on our calculator, what are we going to do? So I want second function, cos inverse, 6 divided by this number here, the 8.45. Remember how we did that before? We go second function, answer. And it puts in ANS, which is the answer. But what it means is it says take the number that's on the previous line, right? That way we didn't have to go back and type in 8.45048813. Because remember, we should only be rounding our final answer, which will be angle SPR, the one we're about to find. Um, and we're going to round that to one decimal place. So we're going to hit enter. We get 44.76 rounded to one decimal place. Look to the right of the place you're rounding. If it's five or greater, that goes up. So it'll be 44.8 degrees. So uh, equals, uh, really short term memory, 44.8. degrees. So now we can go up here, we can say angle S P R is equal to 44.8 degrees. And we're done. Okay, but what we had to use was the information in this triangle, because this triangle did not have enough information. We only had the one side, no angle. By getting this side, we now have two pieces of information, these two sides, and we can use that to find the angle. Got to let the dog in. Solve for angle CBE. All right, let's draw that in. CB, CB, huh? Calgary Board of Education. CBE. That makes it this whole angle here. So we might think, you know, somehow, well, can we find this angle here, little guy? And, you know, we've got a, a side here, 13, and a side here, 15, in relation to that angle here. This is adjacent. This is hypotenuse. We could use the cosine to find this guy here. But uh, we can't use this triangle, BDE, for anything because BDE is not a right triangle. So there's probably no point in finding this because I can't do this. All right, plan B. Uh, what else could we do? In this big right triangle, C, triangle CBE, okay? So when I say angle CBE, I'm saying start here, go to here. I'm talking about this angle. When I say triangle CBE, then we're talking about this 90 degree triangle. Well, if I knew this side here, then I would have this side and this side, right? And this would be the hypotenuse of CBE, but this would be op opposite here and adjacent. We could use the tan ratio and find this angle. So we're looking for this to be opposite to angle CBE and this to be adjacent. and opposite over adjacent. So I need this side CE, so we need to get this little guy here. Let's call that X. Well, this is a right angle triangle. We have 13, 15, and X, so we know that uh, by Pythagorean theorem, if we say A squared plus B squared, oops, get the eraser, equals C squared, uh, what do we got? We got 13 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared. x squared is 15 squared minus 13 squared. x will be the square root of 15 squared minus 13 squared. Remember, I'm going to want an exact value for x because... You know, I don't want to round that. I don't want to say, oh, it's 2.1 or something. If I round it, then when I go to do my calculation, I'm using a rounded intermediate value. I'm likely to throw my final answer off. So we're not going to do that. We need to keep that exact. So what is x? 
that's 2, 2, 5, minus 1, 6, 9. So that's the square root of 56. Feel free to use your calculator to get that. But we're really not interested in this, right? We're interested in this, 50, root 56, but as an exact value. That makes this length here 6 plus root 56, okay, which is a number. And we're going to use that number. So we're going to say the tan, the tangent of theta, right, of some unknown angle. That's what theta is, the unknown angle. Is tangent is defined as opposite over adjacent tan theta. I'm going to call it theta. It's really angle CBE, right? But I don't want to call it angle B because, you know, what's angle B? So we're not we're, we're calling angle CBE, we're calling that theta. So tan theta is opposite, which is 6 plus root 56 over 13. Calculator. Oh, wait, sorry. So theta will be the inverse tan of 6 plus root 56 over 13. Uh, what do you see what I'm going to do here? Okay, turn that on. Okay, let's clear this out. So I want an inverse tan. Um, this 6 plus root 56, I need to put that in brackets, right? You, the way you think about it is a division bar. Yes, Curie will deal with that. A division bar really says you must work out the top numerator and work out the denominator and then do the division. So I'm putting brackets around that. So I'm going to go 6 plus. Now I'm going to get fancier. So I'm going to go root. And I'm actually going to go 15 squared minus 13 squared. 15 squared minus 13 squared. So I'm not even doing the 56, right? And then I'm going to close that bracket. So, oops, I'm going to close it in the wrong place. So let's delete that. I'm, I've got to skip forward here and then close that bracket. So you notice now it's a big bracket. So that that's 6 plus. That's going to be the root 56. And then we're going to divide that by 13. And we're going to close that bracket, which is the whole thing. And it's doing the inverse tan of that. You see the whole, let's go back here. See, right? Take the inverse tan of all of that. Hit enter. And boom, right to the answer, 46 degrees. So theta is equal to 46 degrees. Okay. And if you know you need to go over that, well, you can back it up and scrub it back, and, and away you go if you need to. Okay, and then there's the calculation. Let me just show you that again. Let's let's do this. We'll go second tan inverse, and let's just go six plus root fifty six. And I got to skip forward to get out of the root sign, and then divide it by thirteen. Close the bracket. Hit enter. Whoops. Syntax error. What didn't it like? I guess this bracket here. What? Oh, you know what? I need a bracket there. So let me back up here. Whoops. So I need to insert. So here's how we insert. We go second function INS. Insert. And I need to put a bracket there. So that I have 6 plus root 56 divided by 13. And now we'll have a closing bracket here. And boom, 46 degrees. Again, right? The exact same answer. Okay, so hey, we just we learned a little bit about editing on your calculator and how to edit a calculation. We've learned second function answer, that this is the negative sign, and this is the subtraction operation. Okay, so let's uh let's move on to example four from the top of an 80 meter tower nice straight lines there 80 meters sam spots two fires one behind the other which means that they're in line they're in a straight line right it's not like one is here and one is like over here or something they're they're on a straight line 
If the angles of depression, oh wait, now remember, angle of depression is measured from a horizontal, uh, good luck, see if I can draw a horizontal line. Angles of depression are measured from a horizontal line, so that makes this angle here 14 degrees, because it's smaller, right? And then this angle here will be 18 degrees, because it will be the larger angle. Now, if we want to work within these lower triangles here, then the 14 degrees will correspond with this line. So this angle down here is 14 degrees, and this angle here is 18 degrees. All right, so that's all nicely labeled. We've got this is 80, so we've got an 18 degree and a side of 80. We can work out this distance here. We've got the 14 degrees and the 80. We can work out this distance here. Let's call this X. Let's call this Y. And we need to work out the distance between the two fires. That's going to be this here, which will be y minus x. All right, so we need to work out x and y. So we're solving two triangles, right? This 18 degree triangle here, the 40 degree triangle to get these base distances, distance from the uh, fire tower to the first fire and the distance from the fire tower to the second fire taking the difference between the two which will give us the distance between the two fires okay so where we go what have we got uh, all right we're going to use uh what are the sides named right we don't need the hypotenuse here right so we need opposite and adjacent that's the tan ratio so tan Theta is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so we're going to do two of these guys, right? 10 of 18 degrees is equal to 80 over x. Rearrange x equal to 80 divided by 10, 18 degrees. The 10 of 14 degrees is 80 divided by y. So y is 80 divided by 10, 14 degrees. Uh, you know, we didn't say anything about uh, rounding here. So yeah, we're going to say if in doubt, round to the nearest hundredth. Go to two decimal places. Okay, likely we want it to the nearest meter, but eh, it doesn't say. So if in doubt, go to two decimals. If it's a test and we didn't ask you, then ask us and, and we'll tell everybody in the class, hey, oh, okay, round to this. All right, calculator. Eight, oh, let's clear it so we can see things. 80 divided by 10, 18 is 246, oops. 246.2, 246.2, what's the rest? 14683, 14683. Uh, you know, I want to do the same thing, right? I want to do 80 divided by 10, but at this time I'm at 14, so I'm just going to go second function, enter. What that does is it copies down the last line, and all I want is to change the 8 to a 4, now I get 80 divided by 14, okay, and that gives me 320.8624747, right, and then what we want to do is subtract, okay, so y minus x is equal to, you know, those two numbers there, I'm not going to rewrite them, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go minus, and it's, I, I got two choices. I could type this back in. So when, I, when it says a and s, it's talking about this number here, right? It's going to use that number. From that, I want to subtract this number. You know what? It's easier to go minus, and I'm just going to go bracket, and I'm going to go 80 divided by 10, 18. 
close that and hit enter, right? And it's going to do this minus, and instead of typing in 246.214, I'm just retyping the calculation. And we get 74.647. I said two decimals. It means we look at the four to the right of that is a seven. We round up 74.65. So 74.65 meters. Units come back in at the end. And we say the distance between the two fires is, oops, I'm running off my tablet, 74.65 meters. Okay. Done. Two more. So if you're um, looking at the old worksheet, you'll see one more, but there's two more. So we're going to give you a, a printout of it, but if you're working ahead, I've put it into Schoology. You might want to print off the newer sheet. Sam lives on the 15th floor of a tall apartment building. One day, Sam looks out of his window at a nearby office tower, apparently taller. He notices that the angle of elevation of the top of this tower is 54 degrees. All right, wait a second, where is it? All right, so what we need is a horizontal line here. And an angle of elevation is measured up from a horizontal line. So that's here, and that's 54 degrees. Now, straight across, this is a horizontal line. The tower is vertical, so this is going to be 90, as is this, as is this down here. Uh, what else? And the angle of depression of the bottom of the tower is 30 degrees, so this angle in here is 30 degrees, making this angle 84, which is actually useless information to us. If Sand's building and the office tower are 60 meters apart, which is useful information, determine the height of the office building to the nearest meter. So basically what we're going to do, we've got two triangles. We're going to work out two heights, this height here and this height here, and then we can add them together. So let's call this A. Let's call this B, and we'll call this H, okay, and H is equal to A plus B. All right, this distance here is 60, right, this is the distance between the two towers. So here we have 54 degrees, this is opposite, this is adjacent, that's the tan ratio, so tan theta is opposite over adjacent. The tan of 54 degrees is equal to B over 60. And in this triangle here, we got 30 degrees. This is opposite. This is adjacent. So the tan of 30 degrees is equal to opposite A over 60. So B is 60. 10, 54 degrees, A is 60, 10, 30 degrees, H is 60, 10, 54 degrees, plus 60, 10, 30 degrees. And you know what? We don't really need to work this out and this out separately. So, let me clear this for you. So we're going to go 60, 10, 54. Now, if you're going to do this, it's very important that you close this off. Okay? If you don't close it, then you'll be doing the tangent of you know, whatever you write after that. So 60, 10, 54 is 60 times 10, 54. It'll work those two out and multiply it. Plus 60, 10, 30 close and hit enter and we get our final answer which we want to the nearest what nearest meter to the nearest meter so 117 so 117 in come the units and statement the height of the office building
ding is 117 meters. Okay, one more to go. Now, not on your sheet, right? I'll have given you a new sheet if we're doing this in class. And if you're doing this outside of class, if you go into Schoology, you can print off the new sheet, right? That has the, uh, the uh, revised questions, plus this sheet, which has the rounding on it. So we'll get that to you, or you can print it off. A pump house is on a cliff above a river that is W meters wide. Okay, so there's the width of the river down here. There's the pump house on a cliff, right? So we're, we're dealing with a three-dimensional problem. We have a uh, one triangle, which is flat along the river, and then we have one triangle going up in the air. Chuck, who works at the pump house, maps out a right triangle across the river with dimensions as shown as indicated in the diagram above below diagram below so here's the triangle across the river right he's managed to measure these distances Chuck would like to install a pulley system where he can transfer supplies so they can bring supplies down to here and he is going to haul them up and so we want to figure out what length of rope it would take to go from point s up to the pump house we want it to the nearest hundred. It's going to be in meters because we have meters. And we know the angle of elevation, again, measured from the horizontal, in this case, measured from the ground, the angle of elevation of the rope is 60 degrees. So looking at this triangle, we have some unknown W. We got 60 degrees, another unknown here, another unknown here, too many unknowns, right? I mean, we do know this is 30 degrees here, but that doesn't help us. There's a lot of 30, 60, 90 triangles and they are all similar. What we need is a length and here it is here, W. So we're going to get W from this triangle and we're going to do that using the Pythagorean theorem. And we can say that W squared plus 20 squared is equal to 24 squared. Right, because we know that this is opposite the 90, that's the hypotenuse. So w squared is 24 squared minus 20 squared, which is 576 minus 400, right? You can use a calculator for that. Clear 24 squared, right, 576. 20 squared, 400. So W is, oh, sorry, W squared is 176, and W will be the square root of 176. Okay, remember, we want this distance here. Any intermediate calculation, W is an intermediate calculation, will not be rounded. Never, ever, ever. So we're not going to round this. We're not going to write it out as whatever. As a matter of fact, we're just going to leave it as the square root of 176. That way it'll be exact. So now we switch our attention to the second triangle. In this case, we have 60 degrees. So this is adjacent, and this is the hypotenuse, right? Let's call this R. Which ratio? The cosine. So we say cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, filling in numbers. The cosine of 60 degrees is the adjacent side, right, which we know is root 176, over the hypotenuse, which we're calling R. We interchange these two guys, so R is equal to the root of 176 over the cosine of 60 degrees. We want to calculate that to the nearest hundredth, two decimal places. Okay, let's do it. So root. Now, if I hadn't worked out the, the 176, I could go 24 squared minus 20 squared. And push that over there divided by uh, cosine of 60 degrees, cos 60. 
and we get 26.53 again what do we look at we look here and that's a two it's less than five we leave this so it's 26.53 so r is 26.53 meters the rope is 26.53 meters that would be the length of the rope now he's actually using a pulley that has like a doubled up rope system uh, then you know we would have to double that plus adding some small amount for pulleys and such like that but we're not asked that right it's just determine the length of the rope from point s to the pump house so you know he, he maybe puts a cable in here and he just hauls you know along the cable he needs 26.53 meters of rope so he can haul stuff up and then let it back down again and really that's the answer to the problem so we again we've solved two triangles we've just done it uh, in two dimensions one is this uh, horizontal triangle along the ground along the river and the other is a vertical triangle going along the cliff face you know from the diagram we can see if this is 24 then it's kind of reasonable that this is 26 this diagram may reasonably be drawn to scale but keep in mind for the entirety of your math career, not all diagrams will be drawn to scale. They may just be places to hold information. Um, so maybe this isn't 60 degrees, and actually it's a little tough to draw, right? Because when you're drawing two triangles, you have to draw a perspective drawing. You can't, we, we don't actually have three dimensions here, right? We only have two dimensions. So we have to make things look like um, using perspective. That obviously can't be totally accurate. So, this concludes solving uh, more than one right triangle problems. Um, there will be a, a couple of days to work on this, and then uh, there will be a day for review. Um, if you're following the timeline, then we'll begin the measurement unit and we will be testing it again. Always look at your timeline. Uh, this is the last of the new trig lessons or the last of the trig lessons and remember that we'll be handing out a new sheet of paper to you or if you're working through this and you don't have that new sheet of paper then you can print it off it's it's loaded in there and uh, what I will do is add this to um, I will, will PDF this and put it um, up at the top with the other solutions, uh, seeing as these solutions to this may be a little different than what already exists in there. Okay, so just keep in mind, you might have to look at two different sets of solutions, and this uh, I'll just title as solutions to uh, solving problems with more than one right triangle.